Okay, I think we are we are live now. Uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, this webinar is called uh, "Let's Talk About Tokyo." Today we have a pleasure to have uh, two great coaches, both of them going to Tokyo with their teams. Uh, Attila Biro, Hungarian uh, women uh, uh, head coach, and uh, Predrag Mihailovic, Australian women uh, head coach. Thank you for uh, coming and thank you for uh, accepting this uh, invitation and participating in, uh, in this uh, webinar. First of all, uh, Attila, I would like to congratulate to you for qualifying for the uh, Olympic Games. Uh, great success. Uh, it wasn't easy. There were four really, really, really tough and good teams at the qualification tournament. Uh, but it seems that uh, your team did perform incredibly well at the uh, Olympic qualifications. Can you tell us a little bit about Trieste and Olympic qualifications? Because that's fresh uh, from a couple of weeks ago. Uh, good evening, everyone, or good morning, Predrag. Thank you, thank you very much for your congratulation. And it was pretty tough, uh, pretty tough uh, two, three months. Uh, we had eight months preparation, eight weeks before before a Trieste preparation, and uh, but fortunate, fortunately we had a good, uh, pretty good uh, national league before, so our our players uh, could could play in the national league before a Hungarian Cup in August. August September is a longer Hungarian Cup, like in general. After the national league, Hungarian national league until end of November, so. They, I got them in pretty shape, good shape and good physical condition. So, and after we had uh, enough time to prepare for Trieste, but uh, what I expected uh, to good play, but what was better than I expected. It's always, it's always good <laughs> that way, <laughs> definitely. <Yeah. laughs> always good, <laughs> good that way. So can you, can you tell me, uh, uh, before TS, you mentioned you had eight weeks preparation, right? Yeah. Uh, what about since I would say beginning of this COVID situation in March? How much of a pause, how much of break did players have due to pandemic, you know, like and, and everything else since since March? The first postpone of this of this uh, qualification tournament was in March, so that was the worst because we finished the European Championship in a good, uh, good shape and good play. We we took the bronze medal. We beat Netherlands. After that, uh, Netherlands against Netherlands, we had a, a World League qualifying uh, group games in uh, Hungary. We beat them, so we had a good form and uh, we played pretty well. After that, I I, I thought that uh, definitely we could we could uh, qualify easier than, than now. After that, the second postponement was in May when uh, the FINA told that the uh, qualification tournament is postponed for the following years, like this January. So uh, mainly mentally was very hard and, uh, and uh, the, the girls were really motivated and, uh, and they, they, they had a hard training. Okay, March and April at home because totally was locked down. Everything, every pool, every every gym. So everybody everybody was at home. After that, we had some weeks in together. I tried to I tried to make high the bubble. So we had three weeks together in Komiadi Usada, Chasar Komiadi Usada in the Buddha side in Budapest. So that was very, very good. Okay. We hadn't got any any opponent or any team to play, but uh, was 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 really good preparation. And after that, the, the club took my players, and uh, they have a summer preparation for the club season. So, so I think uh, all club coaches was was uh, very content about this because they had two week, two months, three months, two and a half months to play preparation. For the for the Hungarian Cup, what is started in uh, beginning of middle of August and finishing on uh, September, and after continue with the Hungarian League, so they had enough enough good Hungarian League games, 
in their arms and uh, and after that I, I started to work with them in the national uh, in the national team in the Margaret Island so I think mentally was was uh, pretty hard and uh, you know as you know everybody knows the other players had some question how is going on younger players who who had no chance before maybe they have now they will have now so it's it's a interesting uh, situation is 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 came out and uh, i think is for us it wasn't so bad the, to to postpone this olympic games one year because we have uh, the pretty young team so we have to we need a lot of training lot of play only one thing was missing this 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 lack of games even training games we couldn't play so you know, it's a, it's a training, training games between us is like, uh, you know, it's a cheating ourselves. So it's, it's, it's not the best. So anyway, it's, but I think, uh, except Greece, who had a training camp in Spain and any other opponent in a, in a qualification tournament hadn't got any game like, like Arno's team, Netherlands and, and Italy as well. So we, we, we've been in the same, same situation. So, so basically, what I understand is that only March and April uh, players didn't practice, and after that, either with a club or national team, but they were in the world. After that, we had GMI. yeah, we had some weeks together. After some weeks off, and they started to club preparation around June. Depends of their club. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, Predrag. How do you see the situation in Australia? What is the situation with the COVID now? What is the situation with your team? Uh, did you practice, you know, and all of that, which is a pretty common question right now. Okay. Firstly, hi, everyone, and thanks for inviting me here. Attila, congrats, really. Your team performed really great. Uh, great performance, really. Well done. Uh, in Australia, <clears throat> look, from the COVID, Part, you know, that uh, probably from news that we have really low, low cases, which is really, really positive. But uh, there are some regulations which we have to follow. And uh, a little bit tricky that each state have a little bit different regulations, you know. So from the beginning, <clears throat> when this happened in March, our journey was very interesting. Uh, we, were, we were on the flights to Europe and we should meet with Attila, if I remember well. Yeah. And... Uh, we came to Dubai and then we get signal, guys, you have to fly back, you know. So we finished in Canberra. So it was a long trip from oh, Sydney to Canberra, you know. We go to Dubai, finish in Canberra. And then start this uncertainty, you know, what will happen, what will be. Uh, I don't know, in all these times, really, I was lucky that I have really, you know, good team around me and athletes and stuff that mentally was not easy. But, you know, as a team, I think we went well through this period, and a lot of questions, a lot of uncertainty, which we try in our best way to provide certainty how much is possible and give answers what we can answer. Generally, when uh, Olympics were postponed, we decide one month uh, well, uh, to restop. Yeah? So, so girls have some individual, individual trainings and do the COVID restrictions, and so we have a think and make us think what we will do, what, what is the next step. So after one month we start program, but uh, in Australia in those time and most of time we actually couldn't uh, be together because of state regulations. So is it Western Australia, Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria? So our institute program done uh, our girls training in institute programs like this is uh, organized here. So and this is positive, really positive that they can have really proper trainings, regular trainings. Um, girls were in good shape, so it was going blocks four or five weeks, then one week uh, unstructured week, then four or five weeks, and like this we roll. I'm really happy what I their condition and mentally and physically. Negative thing is, of course, uh, we couldn't have games, we couldn't travel, and we couldn't be as a team all together during this period. So there are positive and neg negative stuff. Thing from my view and as a coach's life i always you know try to look this what are positive i think beside um, 
we have also time now more for ourselves, for athletes, to see, to make some planning after after Olympics, some players may retire or, you know, so I look positive that we are aware that we should, that athletes should be ready also for after Olympics to organize their life, to put plan in place and to be more um, relaxed, not relaxed, I think, to be more, you know, focused on these Olympics that they know they are settled after the Olympics. So, uh, you mentioned one, one thing which is really interesting and, and probably uh, more of a situation outside of Europe than inside of Europe, that your players were practicing at the uh, uh, state organized uh, training, I'm not sure what, what is it called, but mm -hmm. uh, uh, those centers, state centers. Yep. Uh, did you have uh, communication with coaches from, from those training centers uh, and was able to establish your plan for those girls, you know, who were practicing, practicing there yep. and how did that look, look like? Um. Yeah, absolutely. But this is actually going regularly like that now more because we couldn't combine together. So we have like state or we call it institutes here. And uh, in this moment we have uh, we we have regular Zoom meetings with the coaches where we I present what I would, how I would like to go in for next period. Of course, I'm giving, you know, each coach has individual input, but we put some goals for need to be achieved in in a next block let's say by blocks you know uh, as I'm based in New South Wales so I I could be on every session here in uh, in Institute of New South Wales when borders were open or restrictions fall I was going to Brisbane spend there one week two weeks and then like this you know when I, when is allowed I could travel and see other girls beside the coaches we here regular regular zoom uh, zoom meeting with the girls following up how they are going we have some tasks we should put also like video analysis and everything so we can work together and feel that we are together following the other teams following our games and try this time where, why we are not together to get as much improvement as a team as we could do and also me as a coach i found <clears throat> very interesting that in this period you find some other solution which you never thought before you know we but there was no other option, so it's giving a little bit that we have to open our mind, find another solution, be adaptable, and same is from an athlete's perspective, athlete's, uh, athlete's point that they, are, they see that, you know, life is not the same. I don't know, it will be the same ever, but we, we need to adapt and find the best solution for this situation, for these circumstances. So this, we done this video analysis uh, for all the uh, other teams, we communicate, we put some tasks. And look, in this circumstance, I'm really, uh, I'm really satisfied where we are standing now. You know? So in these circumstances and how team is going, staff, uh, I think we've done the best as, as we could in this, in this circumstance. You said, well, uh, every, every challenge is, is a new opportunity, you know, so... Yeah. I, uh, this is second, second webinar, you know, uh, with uh, these kind of topics uh, uh, and talking to other coaches around the world, you know, like uh, pretty much everybody's saying the same, you know, I mean, it's not, it's not good, you know, but uh, it makes you think outside of the box and yeah. uh, try to find new solutions, you know. Uh, so what I understand right, uh, right now is that uh, <clears throat> since March, you didn't have the whole team for one day. Is that correct? Yes. That, that's correct. That's a negative. <laughs> it's a, yeah. We could we plan a few camps, but you know how the regulation changing. We plan, we plan, then we have to pull it back. It's a little bit, you know, each country has different regulation, and here are these regulations. So we couldn't manage that this done be safely and followed by government rules and also our medical advice. Till now, we couldn't be together. We couldn't have, we didn't have any any games, I mean, friendly officially, after our last game was um, January against USA. So it's, it's quite a long period. Another positive is that girls in, uh, that uh, they have a local competition, state competition, which was starting, starting uh, September. So it's not like National League, it's like 
state competition. It's a little bit lower level, but uh, athletes get uh, some games and everything. This is positive. And this is this is in circumstances which we uh, which we work, you know. Other the part that here is really safe environment, uh, you can live normally. So athletes are released. It's not big pressure. There is no big uh, uh, there is not too many cases. You know, there are cases, but numbers are really low. So it's giving you really one positive that you as a person are safe. Then you can focus on what you can do in these circumstances. There are all positive things here. Yes, Australia is probably leading with the uh, with the uh, number of low cases in the mm-hmm. world, you know, for sure. So that's uh, that's really that's really positive. Uh, Attila, now that you're qualified, your team is qualified. Do you have the plan already for until Olympic Games? Uh, if you don't, uh, if you do, how that plan will look like? Uh, if you don't, what are you thinking? You know, how, how would you like that plan, you know, to, to look in the, in the future? Uh, first of all, I had to uh, make our program last, last autumn, last, last summer, because, you know, cannot, cannot make a plan until, until the Olympic qualification tournament. So I trusted um, to my team and, uh, uh, finally, we, 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 we got it. And uh, of course, we have a plan. What is changing day by day? So we have uh, now is a World League uh, qualification round, European qualification round, but uh, could be following Tuesday against Italy and the following months. But now, like the men qualif- European qualification tournament was two or three weeks ago in Hungary, all the European team came together and they played all, the, all their game. So probably uh, the 24th of March, as I heard now, in that week we have, uh, and all the European teams have the uh, World League qualification round together in, in three, four days, in Buda- probably in Budapest, as I heard, but not sure yet. So we are waiting that now. Uh, they are my players playing in their club. They have a club uh, club activity, Euroleague now. This weekend is a Euroleague uh, in Hungary and uh, in two places, Rome and Verona as well. And uh, after restart the Hungarian league again. March, I get the players again for a week and uh, we have this uh, World League qualification, two games or maybe C, uh, three. Uh, and uh, after that, we are. I, I will wait the, the end of the league, but is beginning of May gonna be. So after that, some rest, and after that, I, I start. I will start the preparation for the Olympics. Uh, the middle of June gonna be the World League final eight, but already ninety-eight uh, percent we are there. So we are leading the European group. So. We have beat only only France, and already we are on. We are in the first three, who is qualify, qualifying the super final eight. Uh, we don't know yet where, so it's very exciting thing. And uh, and also, I'm very excited. How can we prepare with other teams? As I Predrag told before before that uh, we had a, we had the possibility to make common training in in, in July. They couldn't come. After that, uh, Spain refused to come because they had a lockdown in Spain at that time. That was in October. In December, US Adams team said they cannot come because they have a problem with this uh, COVID. And uh, after, then, after that, in the beginning of January, the Greek team called me, it's maybe would like to come, but they had the possibility to go to Spain and they had some days in Spain. So... Uh, I am really interested how can we travel, how can we make uh, common training camps, even in Japan before, before Rio, we had uh, common training camps uh, with Australian team in Tochigi, Oyama city, in a small city near Tokyo. Uh, we have the basic camp there, so before, before uh, uh, Tokyo. So after this qualification, we are talking about with Predrag, with Adam, 
probably we are going to US or they are coming maybe with, with Australia. So it's under organization now. Yes, lots of uh, uncertainty for sure, definitely. And uh, you mentioned that camp in, uh, in uh, Japan before the Olympics. Uh, IOC, International Olympic Committee, went out with, uh, I think it's called the playbook yesterday. Yeah. Uh, based on that and current situation, I don't think that's going to be possible. Uh, it looks like, you know, like everybody will have to be at home those 14 days, you know, before flying to Japan and uh, tracked really heavily movements, you know, of the, of the athletes and stuff, you know, and everything else. So uh, it will be incredibly difficult <laughs> situation. Incredibly Absolutely. Difficult. But uh, uh, w- what I'm interested in is before COVID, I'm sure you you had a plan with number of games that you would like to play before the Olympics in, let's say, last year prior to the Olympics. How did it change that plan of number of games? How did it change with this situation right now? What are your expectations from now until Tokyo? How many games would you be happy with? Uh, as I mentioned before, we had practically four four plans A, B, C, D uh, for the Olympic qualification before the Olympic qualification tournament. Now we have as well two three plans to organize or tournament in Budapest or common training camp. Predrag knows uh, very well. We had uh, common training camps in Herzegovina sometimes in in Montenegro. So. I think the one of the most important uh, games gonna be the World League Super Final Eight because the probably the best eight teams going to play there in June. So it's a good preparation for the Olympics. Definitely, any team hasn't got the the top form, but uh, but it's a good preparation and good good uh, probably we will have a good games. And after and before we'll have some common training camps and uh, and. Uh, Every year we organize a tournament in Budapest, so we are we are going to do it. It's ninety uh, percent. It's if COVID says no, just that case we are not organizing. But uh, I think we have we will have enough games around 10, 12, 15 games is is more than enough. So plus the scrimmage and the training games, so it's 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 more than enough. So. That's why I mentioned before, I'm really excited to will have a chance to, to travel abroad or any team can come. So hopefully, yes, because I, I trust the vaccine and, uh, and I, I, I trust the now is, for example, my team, we are going next week for a first vaccine, we'll get it. So hopefully, hopefully all the teams and all the athletes for before Tokyo, we'll get it. And, and if somebody can make a perfect bubble, is the Japanese. So I am 100% sure that uh, they're going to do it 100% well. That's what uh, Adam Gregorian said last time on this webinar. If there is any, if there is any good in, in all of this, you know, like is the Japanese are organizing Olympics, you know, because they, they're probably the, the only one in the world, you know, who can organize it. <laughs> so, yeah. so that's a, that's a good thing. Uh, Predrag, uh, we heard from you about the past. What about the future? What are your plans with the team uh, from now until uh, until the uh, Olympics? Yeah, so our, till now was this. Tomorrow we are starting our preparation and all team will be together and uh, the, we are going two weeks in one place is Berlin, and then after two weeks we are moving to Queensland, and then our base will be there for the uh, next period. Yeah, so... And so we, as Atala mentioned, you know, we have A, B, C, D, F, G, I don't know how many plans. This was our main plan. So our plan is to be trained together. I'm really happy with that. And then, and then we are looking circumstances. Can we, tra- can we travel? And when a situation is so cool, we are below, and uh, we get permission to do that. Uh, we are we are looking forward to travel to have to have games, 
because it was, it was a good question what you put uh, that <clears throat> you plan some you know previous Olympics when this one for you to postpone we have some plans we were three four months in Canberra and then we have the plans to have the USA with Attila Hungary going Europe World League rounds World League finals and there was numbers again we put on paper which will, we believe it will be good for our preparation and the, until this moment our changes are 100 percent because we are on zero games you know so that's a but again this is circumstances which we are, st we are st staying now and these circumstances uh, we have to prepare as best we can i hope that this uh, attila commercial vaccination <clears throat> will help us to we can have more common trainings more games and uh, i hope this will come soon and i hope that all team uh, with this vaccination help more, more freedom and more more possibility to to organize to organize sparring games or, or or tournaments the international tournament which was planned to be in america uh, most likely how this will happen you know uh, this i think March. one in uh, indianapolis right yeah 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 so because they also now for us uh, regulations are if wherever we, wherever we are traveling while we are while on the road back we have to go 14 days uh, full hotter quarantine so means you are in the room no training so do you travel somewhere for two weeks and come back two weeks and no, you cannot do anything there is no logic to do that so next we are waiting what i tell mentioned world league uh, world league finals i think this will be great tournament and i i hope that till that time that we can travel and can participate that. But in these circumstances, if we, we are not allowed, Miss we are not allowed, there is no logic to travel. So we are looking that we can have some scrimmage with the boys or something, but of course, game, games are missing. That is something that uh, Elis Fatovic last time mentioned also, uh, pretty similar, I mean, Australia yeah. also, pretty similar situation one really uh, really tough uh, and unfortunate uh, fact that he that he said is uh, there is also possibility you know like that you would go straight to the Olympics you know from uh, from the Australia without playing any games yeah do you do you see that do you see that also as, uh, as an option yeah I, I see this as option yeah. it's yeah. this is a uh, we control what is controllable, you know? so of course that uh, each team, each coach uh, need a game, but if this cannot happen, these are circumstances and we have to adapt and prepare best as we can. But this could happen that we train here and just from there, and I see first time Attila in Tokyo, <laughs> you know, which is <laughs> which is not, uh, which is not, you know, but <laughs> this is the, this is the way, you know, this I think this is a life. This sport, it's it's changing, and I am always trying to look from that point. This is what we can do. How we can do best in this situation? Of course, you need one day to winch. You know, to oh, this is this is oh, that is not good. Good, put this out, and then focus how what we can do best in this situation. Because this is, we can complain. We cannot do this. We cannot do this. But that's just complaining. It's not so solving solving the solving the problem. Problem is uh, that how in this situation, in this limitation, we can prepare as as uh, as best best as we can. Same time, it's giving also time. I'm looking, you know, that is saying, you know, when within your team or within your village there is no enemy, you are fine. Without there is there is no one that you are worried. So it's giving us giving also positive time that you can sort out or you make your team stronger. That be really as a team that uh, like strong unit and then you are ready for whatever is coming you know from outside so i was trying to find some some positive and i i and I, I find it i don't know. that's my view we were we mentioned a couple of times already vaccination uh is there any plan for that in australia that uh, athletes who are going to tokyo will be on some kind of priority list or something like that because I told oh, mentioned yeah. that you know, like in uh, in uh, that that is in uh, in Hungary. Yeah, I look government regulations are that priority are P 
people who needs to get first. So it's uh, and how these steps are going. A couple of athletes, really, I don't know exact, you know, to make some. But uh, uh, in this moment, the athletes are sitting where they sit. So there is priority people, probably elderly, who need to get vaccine. Now, information which I have through news that uh, mid-February, end of February, we start vaccination here because it's still not yet. Uh, I hope, I believe that uh, Australia is a very organized country. It's not big, it's a huge country. I believe how much huge, but in the same time, there's 25 million people. It's not numbers, you know, it's not some country, you know, it's not USA, it's, real. it's not uh, Spain, 50 million, Italy, 50 million, just throwing numbers. So it's not so huge number. And with this organized system, I believe that this can go, this can go quick, you know. And I hope that once we get vaccine, of course, my understanding is when we get vaccine, still regulations are, we need to follow the rules and everything, but at least that I believe that give us that we can do some something more, you know, and give us more space to adjust our preparation for Olympics. So Atlas said he is hoping, you know, for 10, 15 games together with with uh, other opponents. Uh, and we understand that Hungary in this case, uh, but also some other countries, you know, I. I talked to uh, uh, Arno Havenga, you know, and uh, Dejan Rodovicic from USA, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and some other countries are having games. Some countries are having national leagues going on. Yes, interrupted, you know, uh, but they are, you know, Hungary, Hungary as well, which is great. Uh, Predrag, you mentioned uh, you didn't meet your team at all. Uh, there are no games or there are those state state, state level games in you know, which are lower level possibility that you don't have any any games until tokyo do you see that tokyo may be like some some uh, teams may have the advantage some may have disadvantage uh and in what what sense what do you what do you see right now Uh, I don't know, it's a good question. And it's, it's hard hard to answer, you know. Uh, because second competition in, uh, I didn't mention that in uh, April it's planned to have a national league in Australia, but we hope this will happen. And this is, in this situation, last is that this will be like tournament based, so it's not a home away game. Uh, to come back to your question, you know, so uh, I think. Uh, that this is, and I'm repeating, saying the, could be advantage depends from which you are looking. So, from which angle you are looking, and but I think we, as a team, and Atila has his own team and my me team, and we try to manage to get together. But we need to prepare team in these circumstances. Was bad. Is it for someone better or worse? Nobody counts, you know. And I and I don't want to put this on to measure it. And I'm really trying to to skip from these thoughts because then are coming another thoughts and other thoughts that I'm really focusing on what can I do in these circumstances and that our team be best best as can. Numbers of games, yeah, they are on. We hope that we'll have games, but doesn't mean that uh, if you don't have that, we don't prepare prepare well. You know, we have one experience. Unfortunately, you know, before this happened, we had preparation three, four months together we were in IAS before previous Olympics. And we, we didn't have, yes, we have some boys games that we really focus on ourselves. And then after that, we have a uh, test series with USA. And it was also for a few long period, we didn't have official games with any other teams. And we came and played with USA and uh, I was satisfied with the performance, what we performed. On, on that on that tournament on that series, so there are some positives we pro, for sure can get out from from the preparation with, without uh, without actually without actually official games, you know. That's very positive, brother. That's very positive, Attila. Uh, what do you think? Is there any advantage and disadvantage right now based on what you know around the world? I'm sure you're in contact with your colleagues, coaches. 
uh, and you know more or less, you know, like where the leagues are played, uh, where are not played, uh, who practices, who, who doesn't, who plays games, who doesn't, you know, like, so how do you see this whole situation? Not to play games, absolutely, is disadvantage, as we, as we realized in Trieste two weeks ago. So when uh, first uh, important games in the group uh, we had against Greece, who had some preparing games and the official games as well in Spain before. So after 11 months not to play official either either uh, training games, it's 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 hard. So we 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 felt our skin how 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 to play in the first time against Greece, who who were prepared and we lost against them. So but uh, I didn't say any bad words to my players because I knew that we had a bad game since the first bad game in the first game. So. Definitely is a disadvantage, I think, but uh, now is increased uh, in importance, you know, to play and to to make trainings. So my players realize in this in the last one year how to be good, to be a professional or half professional players, or to play uh, uh, even is a week uh, national league games or cup games. So so. Even uh, this Euroleague is going on now this weekend in Rome and Verona and Budapest. And uh, I saw it's a low level water polo in a club level now. So except the national team players who is playing from the Dutch team and Italian team and Greek team in Olympiakos and Hungarian team in uh, Dunajváros, obviously, they play pretty well. But the other players, it's definitely is a disadvantage not to play good uh, international games okay our players club players as well they could play some games uh, last year so in the national league was was okay so but absolutely disadvantage i think even it's my team predrak has a more experienced team like me like my team so my team is pretty young team so we need we need to play yes definitely games are uh, are very very important uh when we were talking about the Olympics in uh, in Tokyo and all this situation, you know, like, of course, you know, we were talking about this situation because we, like, our lives changed. So it's it's a main discussion, you know, <laughs> beside the sport, unfortunately. Uh, and with the pause, you know, like the, uh, in the training, you know, and disruption of you know, the training and lack of the games, you know, which is all over the world, you know, somebody has more, somebody has less, somebody doesn't care at all. Do you see a potential, you know, for uh, for uh, uh, bigger injuries uh, before the Tokyo and uh, during Tokyo Games? And what are you doing to prevent that? Okay, I start now. Okay, it's, I, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, absolutely. I uh, we had some some injuries. Even it's we had my players had, as I mentioned before, that we had some some national league games but even it's uh, we had some some injuries and uh, and uh, okay any coaches nobody is happy about this but uh, we try to resolve that and uh, and i think the most important now for example to you know it's uh, 12 players only can play in the olympics so it's importance of the goalie you go to with one goalie you go one pl- extra field player or avoid the injuries what's gonna happen okay you can change one player but is is i think the woman water polo like men water polo as well it's it's getting faster and faster and and harder and 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 fighter and uh, in the last 10 15 years so so it's it's uh, the 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 situation of the injuries is a real, real danger. So it's 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 really difficult. I think even it's we have less player than in generally. So my opinion, like in in as I saw the handball or basket or any other team sports, it's have more reserve, more players stay outside in the village, and you can change if any any other injuries. So it's it's uh, it's very difficult question. One more thing that you mentioned just just now, and it's about uh, new uh, 
rule. It's not a rule, you know, but uh, uh, water polo has 12 players at the, at the Olympic Games during the game uh, in comparison to, to the past with 13, with one possible uh, uh, substitution, you know, that can be changed after, after each game. What is your thought about that? And what, what are you thinking if Olympics are right now, what would you do? Would you have, uh, would you have uh, 11 players and one goalie or would you have 10 players and two goalies? I don't know yet, so I have to find a good goalie. <laughs> if I have, definitely with one goalie. If I go with two goalies, you know, the importance of the goalies is, 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 is very important now. So if, if you have only one goal, it's a very big risk. But even if you have just four reserve player on the bench, it's also it's a big question. So, so it's a difficult. I can I cannot answer now about this because I'm enjoying to qualify now and, and slowly I will I will. Okay, I have some idea, but uh, we'll see how it's going on our goalies and uh, our players. So. Yes, definitely, definitely tough, uh, <laughs> tough uh, choice. You, know, you have a few more months, you know, to uh, to uh, think <laughs> think about that. Uh, another another question, and and I don't think any of you have the answer to that. Is Fina, for example, uh, for the qualification in Trieste, uh, and now for Rotterdam for men also he has the, the rule. 13 players plus two substitutions only in COVID situations. That's what I understand. I'm wondering if you have heard something what will be at the Olympic Games. Because that's that's something that is really, really difficult right now with the whole COVID situation. Even from talking to other coaches all over the world, especially those who were in Trieste uh, and who played in Budapest, also at the World League, men coaches and women in Trieste. Uh, two or three players, you know, as a substitution in a COVID situation is just not enough, you know, because you can have three players, uh, three players uh, with COVID and you're out, you know, pretty much. So do you have any information, Attila, about Olympic Games? Do you know anything about that? No, I Fina don't have, but I, I, I suggested to, to fill up prior the Olympic qualification tournament, uh, instead of two players should be four to change in case of COVID positive. So, because if the two players, not players, the problem was that not only players, if the, somebody from the staff, physio, medical, or somebody can get a positive uh, test, three positive tests, the team is going home. So it's, that's, that was hard, hard because, uh, because, uh, you know, can happen any time. And many times, many news I heard about the teams went, everybody was negative after that, got a positive, etc., etc. So so that was really hard, but uh, congratulate my players because they were really disciplined and really, really, really well prepared, even at home, who is, okay, we, we didn't prepare all the time in, in quarantine or, or bubble, but uh, the last, last 10, week, 10 days, 12 days we were in, in the bubble, but uh, before even just two players, we got uh, positive cases. So, so congratulate my players because they were really, really attention and really, really disciplined about this. That is great. Uh, Petra, same question for you. Same question for you, those... 12 players, you know, like in three cases, uh, COVID cases, you know, what, no, what I is think your this was about? really hard. This was really hard, yeah. Uh, that all work what uh, teams now that can be thrown in the water because of something is, which is not controllable. Uh, about Olympics, I haven't heard anything. Yeah, no, uh, no, any that will be some change adapt, adapt or adoption because of the COVID situation. 12, uh, 12 players, yeah. If then 12 plus one, I don't know why this changed, but I don't want to go in this uh, why, uh, discussion. But definitely, water polo and men's and women's are get, getting really faster and faster every day. And uh, by the rules, what we are uh, trying to change and finish time change, we want to game be faster, be more attractive. So, this is just really giving um, with 
cutting the numbers, it's it's not matching because it's hard to keep this tempo because there are some uh, human limitation, you know. Another question, you know, what was about goalkeeper? This, you know, it's really uh, uh, I haven't thought in this moment. Uh, a question: Would you put goalkeeper or, or uh, two, yes. you know? Uh, would you would I you think, have one one goalkeeper or two goalkeepers in? A... Yeah, in, I think uh, that uh, in uh, because I was thinking about that, but um, I think how my decision will be that really depend how preparation is going and how team is going, so that you can make decision uh, when this when this situation comes and it probably depend on the opponents, depend on performance of goalie, depend. Or what is constant in that in that moment? We, uh, I need to make call what I believe that's best for the team. That's you know I don't know if I miss any question because just about the injuries. Did you have yeah, any issues with the injuries? You know, like I'm, how are you dealing have, with that? We have the it's regular, you know, and I'm agree with that. that it's, it's high risk if you're not playing game. You cannot uh, how much you're practicing, but you cannot make. Same environment as is uh, official game because emotions are different, uh, intensity is different, everything is different. So it's getting to to risk of injury, maybe more than is usual because there is no uh, we don't have enough games. But you know, only what we can do this moment that we really prepare ourselves physically as best as we can to be they be ready and be resist resistant in this situation. Yeah, but. As we mentioned at the beginning, the life is not same. It's not as before, and we cannot make our plans and our everything as we did one year ago before the COVID. So, what options that we need in these circumstances? Again, I repeat the same. I'm boring here, but we need to do what we can do and to prepare athletes. And risk is existing, more risk because there are no games. Then, how we we uh, organize our preparation and uh, trainings and everything. So that we minimize this higher risk. Yes, that's, that's our duty. Absolutely. And I'm sure that you have IST team around mm -hmm. who is helping a lot, you know, in, in these situations. And they're working around the clock and uh, uh, thinking outside of the box. You know? yeah. So that's probably something that injury prevention that could be done even at home. You know, as much as as much as possible without the without the pool. You know, but uh, something that athletes can can take care of uh, on the yeah, off. Absolutely, there is a really great team around who is working with that, and uh, of course, athletes. They are mature athletes. They are uh, professional. These professional, they know what to do. They are responsible. They are commit, and they are taking this part of uh, accountability for, for that part. So that in some situation, they are in best shape that they can be in that moment. Right now, there are many information or misinformation or whatever you want to call it going around the world in the last, I would say, month about the Olympic Games. IOC comes out, you know, pretty strong and organizing committee, pretty strong with, with the message, you know, that Olympics are going ahead. Uh, they just don't know which, uh, in which form or shape it will happen. Uh, and then there are some uh, medias, you know, who are saying, you know, that there is a possibility, big possibility, you know, that it, it won't happen. Uh, then we have uh, public opinion also, which is pretty negative right now, I would say, uh, especially in Japan. The latest one that I heard a month ago was that 80% of Japanese, you know, they don't want the Olympics, unfortunately. But uh, that's current situation, as, as you said, uh, Predak. Uh, what do you think? Will it happen? If it happens, how it will happen? Which way, which form, which shape, Predak? Yes. Okay, I can start, yeah. In this, from official uh, Olympic committees, you know, we have, as you said, Dragon, that uh, Olympics are on. And you know, it's really um, we go and now it's preparing playbook and everything, and it's really quite strong decision. Olympics are on, and we as a participating that, I'm thinking just we we are, I'm accepting that 100 percent in this moment Olympics in this moment Olympics are on, and we need to prepare for that. Of course, you know there will be other media, there will be that, 
this is our guidance as a you know sometimes you know spotting are a little bit like so this is what we get and the, and this what we need to prepare uh, I don't think Olympics will be the same. Uh, it will be totally dif different than ever. I, so it will not be the same as before. And we, as you mentioned, after all this, that there will be strong guidelines how we behave there, how we, wh where we can, um, that actually we are going village, arena, or pool, or whatever athletes is going. This will be, it will cover mass, that will be testing, uh, they will be checking temperature. So, I don't think in this circumstance can be can can be say uh, can be can be same as before. I don't think in in, the, in this moment that also spectators will be there. So definitely will be. Uh, I believe that Olympics will happen, but the, uh, definitely be totally different. And I don't have experience. <laughs> Nobody knows how this is like because the first time will happen. But uh, when you read this all, you can have imagination in your head that will be be totally different. How about you, Atla? Do you maybe maybe I'm too optimistic, but uh, I believe this, this Olympic is going on, and uh, and uh, in my opinion, I think the question is the in front of supporters, tourists, or fans, or or without. So I think that is the question, and uh, if without. The, the Olympic Games is also it's okay not the same because we 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 love to play in front of doesn't matter with Hungarians or Japanese or any other fans but uh, it's a, the best thing to play uh, in front of a huge crowd but uh, I think the question is just this the Japanese uh, able to organize it hundred percent well and uh, I believe this uh, this uh, this 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 Olympic Games, okay, hundred percent is not going to the same like four years ago, eight years ago, or or, or many Olympic Games before, but uh, definitely will be. And uh, and uh, I think I believe in the vaccine. So so okay, it's not compulsory. Even our players not compulsory to to get the vaccine, but I think is uh, uh, good to be and uh, and. Uh, Hopefully, is is all the athletes before uh, Tokyo, not just the water polo players. All the athletes get the vaccine, and uh, if somebody doesn't doesn't get it, okay, it's 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 his or her problem. I think maybe I don't know the the situation hundred percent now in how is in Japan, but uh, probably will will have the the vaccine passport or something like that. So. I think, as I heard, but 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 nobody knows now. But uh, I think it's a good, uh, definitely would be a good Olympics, and uh, even it's 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 uh, less less people watching the games or or just uh, every five meter can sit or whatever. I don't know. Uh, Fifty percent of the crowd can can enter the pool to the pool. So I think uh, would be would be. Uh, very interesting, very strange, very, very, very strange Olympics. So, but I, I trust the Japanese and I believe this Olympic Games is going on. Yes, absolutely. Uh, there are many, many things, you know, that we don't know. One of the things you mentioned, the uh, uh, vaccine uh, passports, uh, what, I, what I know and what I heard and what I read is that IOC and the organizing committee will not demand uh, mandatory vaccination for the athletes. And I I can see, especially... especially you muted. I cannot hear you, muted, probably. Can you can you hear me? Yes, now it's okay. Yeah, uh, now it's okay. Especially, especially, especially right now, uh, you know, with vaccination and what is happening around the world, and uh, many, many majority of countries, you know, don't even have a chance to to have vaccines, you know. So from that standpoint, I don't, I don't see that in in uh, six, seven months, uh, it, many things will change, you know. So that's that's one thing, you know, like that we need to we need to consider. In regards to vaccination, it would be ideal, definitely, if, if 
everybody can can get the vaccine, you know, but I don't I don't see it happening. But Attila, have you been in contact with Hungarian Olympic Committee in regards to the Olympics? What is the information if you have? What is the information that you are receiving right now in regards to the Olympics? In regards to the options, how how Hungarian Olympic Committee, uh, which is really known around the world, you know, as one of of uh, uh, great Olympic committees, you know, uh, who is committed to sport 100. Uh, percent How do they see the situation, and what are what are they saying to you? Uh, in regards to the uh, whole situation and how to prepare and what to pay attention to, you know, and everything else. When I, when I meet them and they, they came to our camp, uh, the, the president and main secretary uh, two months ago, two and a half months ago. So that time they confirmed that uh, we prepared be because uh, Definitely, the Olympic Games is going on, and uh, we need to prepare, and etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they confirmed that that was in in uh, end of November. So you know, is uh, many things happened from November, but uh, after that, I didn't see them because I was I was uh, I was in the pool. So now it's starting this this uh, lot of lot of meeting, lot of. Uh, Talking about this in the following weeks, so I I, I will be clever in in some weeks definitely. Okay, Pedro, you do you have a do you have a contact uh, interaction with the uh, Australian Olympic uh, Committee, which is also, by the way, one of the greatest in the world, definitely. Uh, so... We have constant 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 update from uh, Australian Olympic Committee and what I mentioned messages we. Really... Here, Olympics will go 100 percent. That uh, we need to focus on our preparation, and this message is really clear. There is no any, you know, that you need to think something around. That it's really convincing, and I'm really happy to see messages like that in, in this moment, and giving us confidence to athletes and motivation that we, we what, what we are doing. So to yeah, another we are mentioning time. We are real lucky again. You know, this is, uh, Olympics are happening in Japan. You know, they are an organized nation, organized country. So if you could choose in these circumstances where to happen, we, we will probably choose them. Really, they are doing great job and putting all effort and money and uh, volunteers to this happen. And we, as a participant of Olympics, we are lucky that this is happening in Tokyo. Yes, absolutely. There is, uh, there is no doubt, uh, no doubt about uh, about that. Uh, one question, and until I mentioned mentioned this, you know, but I would like to hear from you as well. Uh, there is a big chance that there will be no public, you no know, spectators at the Olympics. How do you think, you know, that affects players, you know, and the performance and uh, and everything, the whole vibe of the Olympics, you know, like and outside of the pool and outside of the village, you know, like and on the streets of Tokyo, you know, like. Like any other Olympics, you know, it's a it's a special event. Yeah. It's a really special event, you know, that uh, spectators and and tourists who are coming, you know, to the city are contributing, you know, to that incredible vibe, you know, like in a, in a city. So, how do you see, you know, like everything right now with the possibility of no spectators? Yeah, uh, I feel like you're probably more experienced now. There was a qualification. There was no spectators. Yeah, I think it will be different. You know, the vibe. It will not be the same, you know. Of course, Olympics are games, you know, competition, you know, uh, high tension, but also, you know, part of Olympic Village that you interact with all other athletes, uh, coaches from all around the world. That's a huge part of Olympics. You know, there is competition part, this part. I don't, I don't know how this will, I don't have answer. I, I think we lose this fight, you know. And uh, in this situation, probably in this, you know, life situation, we, I cannot come to see you, Dragon, now, uh, vice versa. So our vibe somehow, yeah, Zoom is great, but this is not our life, you know? <laughs> so I think this vibe we're we are not, we're, we're not friends anymore. <laughs> 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 you know, so it's totally different when you have communication with you know, a person when he's next to you. And this, it's not, uh, it cannot be similar to Zoom. It's, it's good, but it's not like it's, it's live. 
and I think this vibe will not be as before. But you know, I was looking how what was the world happening and everything that uh, and that we are we will have this Olympics. That again, athletes and staff will be motivated to be again one great great competition, great greater great happening for all the world in these circumstances what we have, you know. Yes, absolutely, definitely. Uh, I'd like to be the same question for you, just to just to mention one thing, you know, uh, uh, before the Olympics, I was telling to my team, similar, you know, like as Frederick just said, you know, like it's it's a competition. I was telling them, you know, it's a it's completely same competition. It's the same pool, same goals, same field of play. Uh, same balls, same players on the other side, same referees, same delegates. Everything is completely the same, but it's not. <laughs> it's, it's so not the same. You know, it's completely different thing. You know, yeah. Olympics are Olympics. You know, how do you see that? Uh, yeah, Pedra, I, I agree with Pedra <clears throat> that uh, unfortunately we got used to it because my players in the national league. In the autumn, last autumn, and, and I in Trieste, my players, we played, you know, in empty, empty pool, but uh, absolutely bad thing. But uh, I see, I think it's a, it's it's an awful thing. And uh, but the spicy of the Olympic Games when you go out from the village, for example, in in Rio four years, five years ago. We, I went Brazilian people, a lot of Hungarian fans come to meet them. I met some former players, friends. So, so that spicy, that very interesting, and and the best thing of this Olympics is disappeared. So will disappear. I don't know. We we'll see. But uh, that's the that's the best thing of the Olympic Games. Okay, to play in an empty pool, it's it's also is uh, disgusting, but. Uh, but you know, just to 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 stay in an Olympic village, you cannot go out because you are in a bubble. You cannot have a drink, cannot have a I don't know a dinner. To go out from the team for a for a I don't know team building or whatever. So so that's the that's the worst thing. In that. I think it's what can happen, but but hopefully not. Yes, I. Uh... I can't, I can't forget the feeling that vibe in a city uh, from London, for example, and uh, Olympic rings at the Tower Bridge, and the people staying there. You know, like it, that's just you know, like it, incredible. You know, like just incredible. And uh, this is sad. You know, like it, it will be, it will be sad. You know, but I, I believe that even in those circumstances, it's important to go. With the Olympics, I truly believe you know uh, for for the athletes, for the coaches, for the staff, but also for for the whole world. I really think it's so important, you know, after this terrifying situation uh, uh, from a year ago, you know, like that world, whole world needs something. Whole world needs something, you know, to to change, you know, mindset and everything else. But anyway, uh, last question for for both of you guys. Same question. If no Olympics, then what? <laughs> what would you What would you do, and what would you like to happen in the summer? And I go to my cellar and make wine. So that's all. <laughs> no internet, no phone. So we have a small winery in Eger, So in a family winery. So. That's the one thing, but what what I can do. So, what about what about uh, the team? Do you see any option, any other option, if there is no Olympics for the summer? It's difficult. Probably many players. It's 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 finishing to play, or going to give a birth, or 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 whatever. If going happen like like you told it's 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 really difficult to to give a motivation for 2022 for the fukuoka or the european champs so as i i see the this is the most dangerous thing that that uh, for the future for the motivation of the players until now wasn't any problem with with my players they see the goal 
uh, we are there, but it's cancel. It's 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 a huge delusion, and uh, I can I can't imagine what 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 can happen. Yes, that will be devastated. Predrag, you, if no Olympics, then what? What do you what do you think? What you like to see? Oh, I would not like this to happen, and I don't think this will happen. But you know, it will be that's why it will be hard, hard for us, you know. So, and uh, probably what Tatsuma mentioned, he said, probably all of us has our place in the in the world. We would like to be and sort out thought and recover from that and get back with some get back with some solution. You know, we have some plans. Olympics is going. And what is the plan? I think this plan should stay, whatever. You know, so um, I, uh, I, don't, I don't have an answer, but you know, we are mentioning seniors now also, and Attila, and we are in program preparing for Olympics. There will be, this will have impact on that generation, but uh, younger generation are, uh, because now it's focused on Olympics, and we can, in this circumstance, work. I think also uh, it's very concerning how younger categories and next generations who are coming, how they are passing through this period, uh, because there is no any competition, there is any anything going on. So I think this, what is going now and effect will come, will pay later on. So, and we just, yeah, Olympics, I'm just throwing thoughts at the at the same time we need to time focus and from our position and from organization to think um, for other generations who are not now in Olympic cycles, you know. About your answer to that, yeah, I don't have answer, you know, this not have, I don't know, I don't know, to, I don't know. really, it's, it will be, I think for our athletes, definitely be shocked, some more, in my generation, uh, the, what I, Attila mentioned, you know, get married, kids, partners, set, set a life, 2024, it's, you know, the next is uh, Fukuoka World Champs is uh, 2022, Still a long period for those artists to who are in certain age to to start again. So it's it's hard. It's hard. Absolutely. hard. Absolutely. hard and the uh, you mentioned development. That is exactly exactly the same point from previous webinar from all those four mm -hmm. coaches that senior teams and teams who are going to Olympics they'll be fine, more or less. Yeah. But. Uh, Everybody is worried about uh, development, development level, you know, like, and, uh, and we're all hoping, you know, that people who are uh, deciding about our sport uh, have plans how to help, you know, this development, you know, in, uh, in the future. Yeah. Anyway, thank you so much, both of you. It was a real pleasure, you know, like, and uh, really fun to talk to both of you. I'm hoping to see you in uh, Tokyo. Let's finish on a positive, uh, on a positive, <laughs> no, positive <laughs> note. Uh, all three of oh, us before. believe that. Yes, all three, all three of us uh, believe that uh, Tokyo Games will happen. And let's uh, stay positive, stay healthy, and thank you so much, you know, for participating here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate thank it, you, Dragan. I really appreciate thank it. You. Nice to see you. Hope to see you live soon. To hear a beer. <laughs> All right. <laughs>